where you fell asleep and slept till the late afternoon. For the next 15 days, we were together for better or for worse. When we woke up, we decided to hitchhike to New York together. She was going to be my girl in town. I envisioned wild complexities with Neil and Luann and everybody. A season, a new season. First, we had to work out enough money for the trip. B was all for starting at once with the $20 I had left. I didn't like it. And like a damn fool, I considered the problem for two days. As we read the want ads of wild new LA papers I'd never seen before in my life in cafeterias and bars until my 20 dwindled to just over 10. The situation was growing. We were happy on our little hotel room. In the middle of the night, I got up because I couldn't sleep. I pulled the cover over baby's brown shoulder and examined the LA night. What brutal, hot, siren whining nights they are. Right across the street, there was trouble. An old rickety, run-down rooming house was the scene of some kind of tragedy. The cruiser was pulled up below, and the cops were questioning an old man with gray hair. Sobbings came from within. I could hear everything, together with the hum of the hotel neon. I never felt sadder in my life. L.A. is the loneliest and most brutal of American cities. New York gets god-awful cold in the winter. But there's a feeling of wacky comradeship somewhere in the streets. LA is a jungle. South Main Street, where B and I took strolls with hot dogs, was a fantastic carnival of lights and wildness. Booted cops frisked people in practically every corner. The beatest characters in the country swarmed on the sidewalks. All of it under those soft Southern California stars that are lost in the brown halo of the huge desert encampment LA really is. You, you could smell tea. Weed, I mean. Marijuana floating in the air, together with the uh, chili beans and the beer. That grand wild soup of bop floated from beer parlors. It mixed medleys with every kind of cowboy and boogie-woogie in the American night. Everybody looked like hunky. Wild Negroes with bop caps and goatees come laughing by. Then long-haired, broken-down hipsters straight off Route 66 from New York. Then old desert rats carrying backpacks and headed for a park bench at the plaza. Then Methodist ministers and raveled sleeves up their arms and an occasional nature boy saint in beard and sandals. I, I wanted to meet them all, talk to everybody, but B and I were too busy trying to get a buck together. We went to Hollywood to try to work in a drugstore at Sunset and Vine. Now there was a corner. Great families off jalopies from the hinterlands stood around the sidewalk gaping for a sight of some movie star and the movie star never showed up. When a limousine passed, they rushed eagerly to the curb and ducked to look. Some character in dark glasses sat inside with a bejeweled blonde. Don Amici, Don Amici, no, George Murphy, George Murphy. They milled around looking at one another. Handsome queer boys who had come to Hollywood to be cowboys walked around, wetting their eyebrows with hinky fingertips. The most beautiful little gone gals in the world's cut by in slacks. They came to be starlets. They ended up in drive-ins. B and I tried to work at a drive-in. It was no soap anywhere. Hollywood Boulevard was a great screaming frenzy of cars. There were minor, minor accidents at least once a minute. Everybody was rushing off towards the furthest palm, and beyond that was the desert and nothingness. Hollywood Sam's stood in front of the swank restaurants, arguing exactly the same way Broadway Sam's argue in front of Jacob's Beach in New York. Only they wore Palm Beach suits, and their talk was cornier. Tall, cadaverous preachers shuddered by. Fat women ran across the boulevard to get in line for the shows. I saw Jerry Colonna buying a, a car at Buick Motors. He was inside the vast plate glass window, fingering his mustachio. B and I ate in the cafeteria downtown, which was decorated to look like a grotto. All the cops in L.A., <laughs> they looked like handsome gigolos. Obviously, they'd come to L.A. to make the movies. Everybody had come to make the movies, even me. B and I were finally reduced to trying to get jobs on South Main Street among the beat characters who made no bones about their beatness, and even there it was no go. We still had eight dollars. Man, I'm going to get my clothes from Sis and we're going to hitchhike to New York, said B. Come on, man, let's do it. If you can't boogie, I know I'll show you how. That last part was sort of a song of hers. We hurried to her sister's house in the rickety Mexican shack somewhere beyond Alameda Avenue. I waited in a dark alley behind Mexican kitchens because her sister wasn't supposed to see me and like it. Dogs ran by. There were little lamps illuminating the little rat alleys. I could hear Bee and her sister arguing in the soft, warm night. I was ready for anything. Bee came out and led me by the hand to a central avenue. Uh, it was colored 
like a main drag, any drag in LA. And what a wild place it is with chicken shacks barely big enough to house a jukebox and the jukebox blowing nothing but blues bop and jump. We went up dirty tenement stairs and came to the room of B's friend, Margarina, a colored girl who owed B a skirt and a pair of shoes, Margarina.